I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, we're going to talk about getting your lawn prepared for the fall lawn cycle. We're also going to tell you how to prevent a fall home invasion. And here's a switch. On the third segment, we're going to tell you what not to prune. No need to fear. Your plants are ready. They are just dormant. <laughs> In our final segment, Carolyn called the hotline and asked about her poinsettia. She's been growing it since Christmas, and she's not sure what she should do at this point. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in the garden right after this break. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. Does your garden have planting insurance? It can now with Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma. It's the ultimate starter plant food. The secret is a special blend of natural organic plant food, beneficial microbes, and mycorrhizal fungi. The result? Plants grow faster, roots grow deeper, flowers and vegetables flourish. Best of all, every Espoma product is safe for people, pets, and the planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are back, Len. And, you know, last week we talked about grass seed. But there's a few steps you can do to help you succeed with your seed, huh? That's right. So say that 10 times fast. <laughs> That's right. So uh, right now, it, it, it's the time to start planning. Are right. you going to thatch? Are you going to core aerate? Are you going to slit seed? Right. And there's a lot of things that are taking up the spots that will soon be dead. For instance, crabgrass. Um, crabgrass is something that will die when we get our first hard frost Mm, and that seed is going to drop from the crabgrass plants Mm. and be an issue next year, next year. Oh boy. (laughs) Now you can, you have a choice. You can apply the crabgrass control now. Um, and not a preventer. It's got to be a non, it's non-selective. You've got to not a preventer. You have to control it now. Um, and you're going to kill it. Got to, you're going to have to wait a while before you can seed, mm-hmm. but what will happen is that will open up areas um, in your lawn where you want that new grass to grow. Well, yeah. So that new grass will be up and growing when that crab when you put down your crabgrass control in spring. Mm-hmm. Did that make any sense? Yes, it did. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> Could you explain it to me, please? <laughs> now, once you put that uh, crabgrass control in, how long do you have to wait? You're yeah. going to have to wait. Really, it's going to be later. You're, you're going to be in the late September. Um, yeah, it's longer yeah. for a crabgrass. So mm-hmm. if I was not going to do something we're going to talk about during this segment, that right. would be probably it. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I absolutely would do right. is put down Weed Beater Ultra. Now, yeah. that is a uh-huh. broadleaf weed control. Right. It will control any of the broadleaf weeds that are in your lawn now. Uh-huh. 
And it's yeah. going to do the same thing. And, and the whole point that we're discussing about this is making room for those new grass seedlings that are going to sprout Good up after you apply cra- uh, your uh, grass seed. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And Weed Beater Ultra is the one. Is the one. Yep. If I was going to do one thing, that would be it. That'd be it. Mm-hmm. And that will, uh, you can seed in two weeks after wow. it. That's pretty fast. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. And it's a great product. Yeah, it is great. Great we product. I love that one. You need to yeah. just be careful. Um, don't put it down when it's going to be 85 oh, or more. Yeah, too hot. It's exactly. Mm-hmm. Too hot. And again, it, it's trying to take care and clean up of some of these issues that you've been having, like disease control. That's uh, another one, yes. You know, I've got some open areas that right. I, I think I confessed that I had a uh, issue with grubs. Oh, you did? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the birds? You were talking about yeah, the birds last time. Yeah, oh, the my birds. Yeah. The birds. So yeah. that uh, I, I've got grubs. I, yeah. And I'm going to put down a grub down control now, right? uh-huh. and control the grubs because now is the now perfect is the time. time. Yes. Now Don't, is the time. Yep. Don't hold off. Uh-uh. Don't. The, putting down a grub control uh-huh. in... Uh, early spring is not that right. effective right. because they're so deep in the soil that they're not up up high enough yet. Right. Like they are today. Yes. Right yeah. now, they're, <laughs> they're feeding right away. at the top. That's right. Right at the top. If you've got a lot of bare spots and <laughs> you, you may not have an issue with a weed or something oh, else, boy. it may be grubs are eating your lawn. That's right. So yeah. definitely a grub control. Yes. Definitely grub control. Now, once you have all these weeds gone, right? Right. From you, t- it's two week, you know, two two weeks down the line. Yep. So, what's the next step? Would be to what? Clean all that. Well, I would. I wouldn't do anything. Just let it. Uh, and it all depends on what your renovation is going to be concerning mm-hmm. the seed. If you're just going to slit seed or thatch, you're going to pull most of them or a lot of them out when when you do that. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole idea that we want to make sure everyone understands that you have to get the seed in contact with the soil Soil. Mm -hmm. and opening up these areas by killing the weeds and making Mm -hmm. sure the grubs have stopped uh, (laughs) getting your good grass. (laughs) Um, That uh, it's opening it up and bare patches for your good seed, but you have to get that seed in the soil. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it might be better to core aerate. Now, Explain what core aeration is, Julio. Core aeration is, uh, you, and you can uh, go to uh, to Bloomer's Home and Garden and get a core aerator. Yep. And uh, what that does, it just it has these little, t- I guess, what do you call it, tines, yeah. and um, they get, they circulate into your soil, and it pulls and, out a and plug. It pulls out a plug, yes. Mm-hmm. And that those little plugs, again, they make room for your grass to grow. But they also make little seed pockets. So when you put down your seed and you water it in, those seeds go like as water goes Mm -hmm. to its lowest spot. Right. So you want to just put that seed down then and and it will work. But the best method is going to be when you use a slit seeder or a power seeder. Now, how does that work, that slit? It has, think of uh, a row of, say, skill saw blades. and. cuts a groove in the soil Mm -hmm. and then just behind that slit seed gets dropped in oh it does and so and it will get into the soil in contact with the soil Uh it's all about contact with the soil that's a great tool yep Mm -hmm. yep and even even better those Mm -hmm. two are better i think than thatching i mean Mm -hmm. thatching has its place Mm -hmm. um but uh, again it's all about getting the seed in contact with the soil and Mm -hmm. you have to do these things as far as the the weed beater ultra, weed beater ultra. Mm-hmm. needs to go down now, now. put yeah. it down now, and put right. that cur- that uh, grub control down now, and right. they could be done the same day. Sure, you know, you know, mark out on your calendar I'm on Saturday. Yeah, I yeah. am going to do it this. Is. It's Labor Day weekend. That's right, Labor Day weekend. You know, so I might as well do a little labor, do, right? <laughs> do a little labor on your lawn. Yeah, there you go. But it'll pay off. Oh, when yeah. you go sure. and you do the thatching or the, the thatching any seeding that. that you're going to do with a slit seeder, mm-hmm. that it's going to benefit, um, you know, then when you do it when then. You do so, it then. And again, you've got two weeks sure. to do the all of that. But you want to get these t- items done, done so that yeah. the weeds start dying now. Now. Yeah, mm-hmm. you want. And that uh, weed beater altar does work quickly. Yes, I it mean, does. It says in 24 hours it you'll see results. 
Which is pretty good. <laughs> Which is really good. And the yeah. fact that you can reseed in, in two weeks. Two weeks. That's pretty quick. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Um, again, do these things now, now. so that yeah. you have better success when you actually do seed do in a couple of weeks when Literally. it gets a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because your whole idea is making room for your Boys, new seedlings to, to grow. In. Wow. Right? Yeah. Beautiful. We love it. Yep. Mm. Yep. All right. We've got a break coming up. There you go. And then after that... It's time to look out for fall invaders. Oh, oh look out. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Do you want a picture-perfect lawn this year? It all starts with using the best grass seed available. Bonide makes that happen with DuraTurf Grass Seed. Bonide is using the best varieties of grass seed available today for their DuraTurf Grass Seed blends. When you start using Bonide's high traffic and heat and drought grass seed blend, you will have a deep rooting lawn that requires less water. Therefore, you will save money in water bills and also resist the harsh summer heat and sun. Bonide's DuraTurf grass seed mixes are disease and insect resistant and will grow in poor soil. You get all these benefits along with having a naturally durable dark green lawn. When planting grass seed, always use Bonide's lawn seed starter fertilizer to get your grass off to a healthy start to ensure that picture perfect lawn. Bonide products are available and family made at these fine stores. Garoppo Stone and Garden Center, Newfield, New Jersey. Spots Hardware, Medford, New Jersey. Magnolia Garden Village, Magnolia, New Jersey. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center for the best selection of summer flowering perennials anywhere. Grown flowers in colors as vast as the rainbow. Reblooming daylilies in all the best varieties. Giant hardy hibiscus with flowers that measure 12 inches across. Make sure to visit our water garden department. Fish plants and water treatments that will keep your pond beautiful and crystal clear. Thinking about a new filter, UV, or water feature? Bloomers has them all in stock. Need to replace that sterilizer bulb? Bloomers carries a wide selection to match your model UV. Fall decorations are starting to roll in. Wind chimes, flags, and more. Bloomers has been selected the best of the best garden center by South Jersey Magazine. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township today. Just 30 minutes from Philadelphia. Find more information at bloomers.com. That's bloomers.com. Well, not only the kids are going back to school, but we've got a yeah. bunch of insects and uh, pests that are starting brother. to look for uh, yep. a home for the winter. <laughs> I know. So they're, yeah. you, you were telling me when, our, when we were coming over the bridge, uh, you were talking about crickets. <laughs> oh, my god! I have the same issue. Yeah. It's like have, the outside I, coming in. <laughs> it is. It is. And, and, and folks, uh, what's happening is that all of those uh, insects that were outside are thinking about like, okay, now what am I going to do? Like, <laughs> what am I gonna especially do? crickets. Like if uh -huh. you've noticed the crickets that are coming inside your garage, mine are inside your garage. You had some in the house. Oh, in the home. Yeah. It's mine are in, in the home. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and like in the winter, have you ever like moved a curtain and all of uh -huh. a sudden find a stink bug like between uh, yes, the folds? <laughs> oh, <laughs> brutal. That's the worst. Oh, that's the worst. You yeah. know, and it's like you think it's uh, dead, but it ends up that. moving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. us mm -hmm. professionals don't like that. No, we don't. You sound like sissy boys. <laughs> Come on. Get out there. Squish it. That's right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, we recommend some preventative measures. That's right. But also mice. Oh, mice are bad, yes. Mice mm -hmm. are bad. And the mm -hmm. field mice, they're looking for a place to to winter over. Right. So you yeah. need to start thinking about uh, some things. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say this enough. Grubs, Grubs. have hatched mm -hmm. and are feeding on your lawn. That's it. And in your landscape. Mm -hmm. Apply an insect control right now on your lawn and your landscape to control the grubs mm -hmm. so that you won't have an it. issue in spring. Yes. And you'll uh, also reduce the population of Japanese beetles. beetles yes. That's it. Win-win. Yeah. But mm -hmm. let's start with mice. Uh-huh. Right. 
mice are, you'll all of a sudden see, and, and I'll include chipmunks with chipmunks, this. Chipmunks yeah. you may not see inside the house, yeah. but they're looking to dig oh, yeah. moles, voles. Yep. They, they, they are. Eat, they eat quite a bit too of everything. Oh yeah, and <laughs> though they're going, they'll go oh, yeah. and they'll eat your um, oh, the roots of your roots plants, of plants yeah, especially tender it. plants like mm-hmm. perennials. All of a sudden, your perennials don't come back. You wonder why. Back, yeah. uh, we have here if you're looking on our YouTube channel, chipmunk, chipmunk squirrel, and rodent repellent. Oh wow! Okay, those of you with a soft heart, these <laughs> these are not going to uh, kill them, but it's no, going to chase them. To another location. Area. Yep. And ultimately, that's what we want. We just don't want them to get into the house. Mm -hmm. And you have to make those, you have to do that now because once they're inside the house, they'll Uh, find your trash cans and they'll find, you know, that box of crackers Crackers. that you haven't (laughs) used in 10 (laughs) years. Yeah. But the one thing that's great about this product, and and this this is a Bonide product, again, one of our favorites. Mm hmm. You can put it around your bird feeders. Oh, so what happens is that it doesn't doesn't chase away the birds, right? But it the squirrels and the chipmunks and the mice that you may not see because they may be there at night, right? Right? They're not. They're, they're not. Gonna you usually there. don't see yeah. mice during the day. No, and if you don't. do, there's there's something, something wrong. wrong. Yeah. They're either poisoned or they're right. something's going on. They're a little dopey. Now, now, is this product? Are you able? Let's say, for instance, you have a squirrel that you don't want up your tree, right? Can you squirt that on the tree itself and prevent the uh, squirrel from going up or down or whatever? Well, uh, it, you can put it anywhere you don't want it. And, oh, okay. and again, any repellent product, you're modifying the animal's behavior. So it's just That's like moving. training a puppy mm. to not go to the bathroom in the house. You have to be consistent and you have to reapply it. It's not that you're going to get one, one shot, shot and, oh, well, do I'm done. No. You're going to have to probably reapply it. it several okay. times. Right. And you're in... The key is is that it's consistency so that every time that they come back, they associate that area As you with can't touch that it. irritant. Mm-hmm. So they say, oh, you know what? We're not going to right. that house. Let's go to Let's the neighbor's, neighbor's house. Yeah, it's too hard to get in there. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. So, and that's that's the one thing to do. All repellents okay. are like that, whether it's a deer whether repellent, deer. rabbit repellent. Okay. You are modifying behavior. Wow. Um, and that's, that's the key. Mm-hmm. And this is all organic. Cedar mm-hmm. wood, castor oil, clove oil. Uh, it has also peppermint oil. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Safe it's for pets and people, right? Safe for pets and the planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. if you like that, uh, repellent. Absolutely. There you go. You know, also talking about mice repellents. Mice, is oh, that yeah. The, Another one, right? I like, there's something called mouse magic. Mouse magic. Yeah, uh, like there's little scent packets. Uh-huh. Uh, you put these in your drawer right. or where you see activity in the house right. and that, they will stay away from it, like especially like garbage cans, like right, I mentioned. Like if you have a garbage can yeah. and under the sink, under a sink. lot of times that's a they spot. They come in there. Mm-hmm. Like if you see the droppings or things. Right. So if you don't want to kill the little guy, you know, right. you have that option. Um, guys use this who right. have antique cars oh, they do. that put them away for the winter oh, okay. so that they don't want the mice making like tearing up tearing their up the upholstery oh, or, yeah. or their tops or anything mm-hmm. like that. So they'll use mouse magic wow. and Keep them away from their oh, yeah, uh, yeah. antique cars. Huh. I wonder if my neighbor has one. <laughs> my, another tip from yeah. Bloomers in the Garden. There you go. Uh, again, got to do it now. Got to do it now. Got to yes. do it now. now uh, all right. So, so rodent population we've oh, taken care of. That's right. Now we have an issue with our friends, uh, your crickets. Crickets. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. You all have over. them in the house. In the house, yes. So what are you going to use in the house? Well, let me see. We have a product here too. That's um, the, the household uh, household insect, insect control. Yes, by Bonnot again. Right. What's okay. it? What's the active ingredient in that? The active ingredient in, in that is uh, permethrin. Del, no, delta methrin. Delta methrin. Delta methrin. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Safe for indoors. Yes. You Safe. just just have to be careful. You know, uh, that don't touch it. You know, with your fingers and things like that, and your <laughs> eyes or whatever. <laughs> 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 yeah. Just spray it on. It's a spray. Yeah, ready to use, and it has a long residual, which oh, I yes. like. Mm-hmm. Four um, months. I have so. used this in my own house for, oh, yeah. for actually ants. Okay, but yeah. that is listed for crickets and for ants, box elder, roaches, ants, spiders, fleas, stink we, bug. Ants start okay. start getting a little freaky this time of the year too. Uh, yeah, they're yes. they're they're everything sees the sun change, oh, and yes. they are 
you know, that is pushing them into action. It is. You know, we've mentioned that, that the sun is the thing, the amount of sunlight that we get, that is the trigger. Right. And now I would apply, there's a permethrin, a granular permethrin right okay. that is, uh, like for instance, Bonite has an ant granule that also, Jonathan Green also has Angela. an insect control okay. that I would do a perimeter around, around the house. The house. Okay. And I did that in the spring and I usually will get those little tiny ants in the house. Oh, this year yes. I have not had them. Oh, good. And it's all about that I did a band around, around my the home perimeter? of okay. the permethrin. And permethrin mm-hmm. is a non-organic copy of an organic insecticide. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that one. That's a copy uh, of the other one. Huh? Right. Wow. Send your questions to Julio Zamora. <laughs> right. So, I'm a scientist. Like, so it's not <laughs> truly organic, but, but the chemistry is based just, off of chrysanthemum flowers. How about that? Longer residual. There you go. But again, it controls a, my crickets. They're going? They're going to be. Oh, okay. Because they, <laughs> they snuck in the garage. Now, uh, I hadn't done anything nothing yet. since... Probably May. May. And, okay. and I mean, May. it's done. Yeah. But again, this is going to work against ticks and against um, against cr- chinch bugs, chinch cut bugs. worms, bill bugs, earwigs, sod, webworms. Wow. That's all outside stuff. Yeah. But it's also going to obviously work against ants. Ant. It's going to work against stink bugs. Stink bugs but okay. stink bugs are not, they're sneaky. Yeah, they sneak well, through how do they get in the house? I mean, they know. get in through cracks and things. Yeah. That delta methrin that, that you have yeah. uh, in that spray bottle, that's going to work oh, better. Oh, yeah. Another one I saw in there was silverfish. We get that in my house a lot. Yeah. 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 I don't know where they come. They I come out either. the drain. I, 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 yeah, they love water. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So that, uh, like you were telling me that uh, you had your brother crushing. Uh, oh, crush one the other day. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. He thought it was gone. It's, it's gone, and the next day was gone. Said, oh, you there it him. is. <laughs> well, again, inside pass. Uh, you want to prevent now yes, by putting yes. that band around, and anything that's right. inside, you want to use that uh, delta methrin. Uh, there, there is organic options. Um, Willie, do you have an organic option for inside the house? No, not re- no, I mean there are some like you could probably use Captain Jack's, Captain Jack's, but maybe. it's not recommended. I, I still, I, I still like the permethrin, yes. and there's permethrin in a spray. Right. It's again, it's confusing to to try to get everybody to understand that that it's organic, but not considered. It's not it's not organic, <laughs> but it's from an organic, organic chemistry. Source? It is copying uh, the chemistry in. An organic, organic. insecticide. Oh, okay. Yeah, we like that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, awesome. and it works very well. Sure. Yeah, and it's because uh, the organic version does not last. It has no yeah. residual. No. You know, you got to hit it, and then if you hit it, it, you again, kill it, it again, but if you, it again. If you don't, it's it's, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. So no. this is greater. Yep. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so, do a perimeter right of the a layer. granule, permethrin. That's what I suggest. Right. You could do delta oh, methrin, nice. like Julio ha- is uh, talking about. Right. You could also do that. That would be all right. Okay. Um, do it, those do it around your around house, house, and yeah. then you'll you'll stop some of those or most of those insects from getting in, in and overwintering. Yeah. Yes. Tip of the day. Yes, sir. Tip Look of the day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We've got a break. We'll be right back with more Bloomers, Bloomers in the Garden right after this. tuned for the Bloomers Garden Minute. The Garden Minute is brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Philadelphia Garden Radio. Find us on the radio dial or on the web at bloomers.com. This is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden for the Garden Minute. Ah, the summertime, the flowers are blooming, the birds are singing, the garden is yielding its bounty. Yeah, but the weeds are growing and the bugs are feeding and breeding. Next year's crop of insects are laying eggs and the weeds are dropping seeds all over your lawn, landscape, and garden. Those insects plan to host a family reunion right in your yard next summer. The weeds are planning a reunion of their own if you don't control them now. Insects want multiple generation. Weeds too. Taking care of today's insects and weeds means no descendants next year. Don't pass up this opportunity. Control next year's pests now. Get out to Bloomers or your local area independent garden center today for help getting those pests under control. Cancel that reunion and make your home and yard care even easier next year. This is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden for the Garden Minute, and we'll see you in the garden. 
Today's Garden Minute was brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Also brought to you by EPG, the Fertilome people. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilone peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilone succulent potting mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609 609- 685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, and we are back. And, folks, if you listen to Bloomers in the Garden before you've heard us say, don't fear the shears, <laughs> now what, Len? Yeah, now, <laughs> now we're telling you to just holster those shears That's for right. a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, most of the time we tell you, you know, just go yeah. ahead, cut away, and, cut away and shear. But now is a time where you want to let things go to, to mm-hmm. deadhead. Don't deadhead. Let them go. Uh you know, one of the first things are roses. Roses, yeah. You know, you don't mm-hmm. want to prune your roses except mm-hmm. for if you have like rubbing canes right. where the winter mm-hmm. wind is right. going to rub them. And sure. you want to cut that out and, and kind of strategic cuts. A little trim, right? Yep. Yeah, but you don't want to shear anything. Yeah. You want to let those flowers turn into rose hips. Oh, yeah. It's a great time. Beautiful. Roses do fantastic in the fall. Oh, they do. Drier weather, mm-hmm. less disease issues. Right. Uh, and one thing you want to keep spraying. Don't stop don't spraying. Stop, uh, Just because we're set saying to you can stop cutting them back. Don't don't take don't take that. Uh, yeah, don't. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're done. You're done. That yeah. You still it's need still, to spray uh-huh. and and make sure you're picking up any of those leaves, leaves that drop. Yes, and and disease, again, we're talking about yeah. roses uh-huh. because those leaves have those disease the, spores right. that you may have next year in your garden. You don't want that. Yeah, they transfer it right back year to year, uh-huh. year to year. Wow. Should we mention grubs again? Oh, I, I, I can't tell people enough. How Go important. and kill your grubs now. Yes, now. <laughs> Don't just forget. Just like the rose spores that mm-hmm. will happen next year, those grubs, they're next year's grubs. Next year, yes. Of mm-hmm. Not only grubs, but Japanese beetles. That's right. Go kill the grubs. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, But let those uh, flowers mature into rose hips. Oh, yes. Or it's like, you're, you're Mr. Organic, like... Organic, uh, yeah, uh, much. I guess, what I it, homeopathic. About. Homeopathic, yes. Right? Mm-hmm. But like rose hips is rose a... Hips. People take rose hips. Pictures. Yep, they do. What is it for? Do you know? No, I haven't used it. You haven't used it? No. But it, but it is. You'll Probably see is. it on the uh, look that on up. the vitamin shelf. Vitamin shelf. Yeah. Anyway, so let your roses go into their rose hip stage. There you go. Uh, next thing, all those perennials hmm. that have those big heads, like purple cone flower. Yeah, oh, we, I, whoops. Oh, they're no oh, longer no purple, longer purple. Cone flowers. No, they're not. <laughs> cone flower. Cone flowers, yes. Inconacea. Yes, echinacea. Yes. Mm-hmm. Pulled out yeah. that name from uh-huh. my pocket. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I know botanical names. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Rutabecchia, like, <laughs> like uh, black-eyed, black-eyed Susan. Black-eyed Susans, yes. Mm-hmm. Let them one. go at this point, too. Yeah, they're pretty. No longer cut them back. Let them form seed heads. The goldfinch will absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. You'll see all types of birds that will be feeding on it, oh, and, yeah, and it will supplement what you're doing in, in your bird feeders. But uh, they look pretty in the winter time too. You know they, they do, yeah, they do. Brown color, you got you to have a little color, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's it's again, it's texture. Mm-hmm. A good landscape sure. is color, texture, and form. That's right. 
And this will give you a form in the winter, winter yeah. and it will give you a different texture, different, different elevations, yeah. and it'll give you something to look at. To look at, yeah, when you uh, walk out. Right, mm -hmm. right. And that, again, birds, it's all birds. about the birds eating yes. them, and that uh, it, it, the birds will thank you. Yes, they will. Uh, and grasses. Oh, grasses. Oh, I love that. The grasses are kicking Wonderful. right now. Yes, they are, aren't they? Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. You do not cut back see them the grasses the now. You yeah. do not cut the grasses in no. the fall or the winter. You let them go and do their thing. Just yeah, lay gorgeous. back and enjoy those ornamental grasses. Right. You don't want to go and, and, and cut them deck mm -hmm. until spring. Mm -hmm. Let them go. They're going to go to that uh, brown Brownish. color where it's uh, at that, it's pretty. that creamy. creamy. It's yeah. going to be getting another color, another texture, color. form, yep. a different texture in the landscape. And the wind hits it, you know, and it's still moving. Yeah. It's really beautiful in the wintertime. Some of those grasses that, like those yeah. penicetums that penicetums. have the foxtail oh, that are on goodness. them. goodness. Look at that. Yeah. We have one here, like, right now, folks, and you should see this. Ah. Yeah, yeah. If you look My on goodness. YouTube. Yes. It's, uh, it's on our YouTube channel. Yes, it is gorgeous. That you can see it. We've got one of the varieties of penicetum. It's yeah, uh, Hamlin, which Hamlin. is a dwarf, dwarf grass. Yep. It's in foxtail right now. Mm. And those of you that have planted the red fountain grass, Ooh. okay, Penicetum rubrum. rubrum yeah. They are not hardy not, in this area, uh, it's a shame. but they are stunning through the they fall. Are, yeah, you got to have them. They, they uh, again leave the them go them, to yes. to seed. Birds will feed Coming on in. those. Yeah, wonderful. Um, even right now, we've, we've got uh, different types of grasses that are coming in just for the fall season oh. to use in like mixed containers, pots, things yeah, like that. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's you don't want to cut anything back. And, nah. and those, again, Penicetum rubrum, which mm. are the red fountain grass, they are not hardy not in hardy. this area. Yeah. So they are going to eventually need to be pulled out, mm -hmm. but I would leave them until the spring. Right. And when you do your spring cleanup, you're going to pop them up. either out of the ground or you're going to take them out of your Man. pots. Mm -hmm. But leave them there because that, that makes a nice thing for the birds to be able oh, to, yeah. to even hide, hide on and yes. feed on, nest in. That's why you don't want to cut back your grasses because the birds will go in there and they'll, they'll That's play right. around and uh, hide. That's right. So yeah. let your perennials go to mm -hmm. seed. That's right. You know, it's 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 a rare thing that it's we're telling rare. you to put away your yeah, shears. That's right. But, uh, <laughs> that's right. For those things yeah. that the birds can eat, mm -hmm. that's what you want to do. That's right. And that's I usually cut back my grasses like around at the end of March, beginning of April. Yep. You know. Yeah, and then they start popping up, popping up through again. the center. Yeah. So there ready you to go. go. All right. So enjoy it. Enjoy yeah. it now. That's mm -hmm. right. Oh, do wonderful. You, you, you don't, we're not giving you a job to do. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we're putting it away. We're putting those shears away. That's right. right. <laughs> so just relax and enjoy yeah, the garden. That's wonderful. <laughs> All right. We've got a oh. caller from the hotline coming up next. So just stay tuned. See what she has to say. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Are fleas and ticks making your favorite pet's life downright miserable? Bonide Flea Beater products will make your pet's life flea and tick free. Controlling fleas and ticks is as easy as one, two, three. Bonide's complete three-step program starts with controlling fleas and ticks outdoors with granular or hose end flea beater products. The second step is to control fleas and ticks indoors with Bonide's Flea Beater, aerosols and ready-to-use products. And the third step is to control the fleas and ticks on your pet with Bonide's Flea Beater or pet ready-to-use. All products are deadly on fleas and ticks. So if fleas and ticks are causing your favorite pet to scratch and itch, get Bonide Flea Beater products today and put an end to their flea and tick problems. Bonide products are family made in America. Bonide Flea Beater products can be found at these fine retailers. Limerick Hardware Company, Limerick, PA. Dublin Agway, Dublin, PA. Primex Garden Center, Glenside, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. 
888-888-8880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, Julio, this uh-huh. time of the year, we have a lot of plant parents coming in. <laughs> That's right. Like that, plant parents? Plant parents. All of you that have purchased any type of plant, you are now plant parents. There you have go. adopted a shrub or uh, a tree or uh, a house plant. Right. <laughs> like that? <laughs> like that. <laughs> but what's happened is they get a little panicked oh. that they're saying, oh, my plant's oh, dead. Oh, they're dead. Oh, no, no, no. Are they dead? No. <laughs> no way. What's happening? Ah, they're just uh, shedding their leaves. That's all. They're showing their leaf? Yeah, shedding. Shedding. Shedding a little bit? Yeah, a little shed. They're showing their uh, winter color? Yes, a little, uh, a little bit. Well, that's what's happening. I mean, I, I mean, that's the point I'm, I, I'd like to make. Mm-hmm. What's happening is that that winter color, okay, mm-hmm. is happening now, and they're starting wow. to show, I guess, more fall color. Right. Like, for instance, dogwoods. Right. Dogwoods are losing their sheen a little right. bit, and so they're turning a little bit brown. Brownish. Yeah. Um, I, a, a lot of the um, varieties of Japanese maples, maples yes, are looking kind of ratty. Yes, they are. You know, mm-hmm. but that's natural. natural. It again, it's from sunlight, it's sunlight. right? Yep. It's not it's the sun. temperature. It's sunlight. Sunlight. It's sunlight. Yeah, less sunlight. Mm-hmm. Right. As that sunlight changes, yeah. it calls those plants into a different color. Right. And those fall colors are starting. Starting to grow. It also depends on where you have it positioned in your yard. But the point I want to make is that by this time, plants, the majority of plants have set their secondary buds that will be coming out in spring. Spring, right. So if you have a plant that completely defoliated, lost every single leaf, that there are still buds that are there for the spring. So I wouldn't replace anything in the fall yeah replace it in the spring if it if it turns out that it doesn't push mm-hmm. out any growth then yeah mm-hmm. it's it's dead it's time to replace it right. but right now would not be the time because you may be mistaken there are so many plants that are, that are doing my golden chain tree it's my golden chain tree is has it dropped it hasn't lo- dropped all of it no, it's some right a lot it's uh-huh. looking it you know to the point where i did a double take i was like uh-huh. what's going on there and, right. and you it's just something wrong and mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong. That's good. Yeah, like that Fort McNair uh, oh, horse chestnut. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. I mean, it is, <laughs> it is gone. brown. Yeah, it's a Look, stick. <laughs> it, is, it looks terrible. Oh, and God. it's uh, it's actually. Nobody's going to get that And one. it's actually in a prominent place at Bloomers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I kind of hope nobody looks at it. Oh, but wow. in the spring, it looks gorgeous. Yeah, it does. Beautiful it? red oh, flowers. Man. People are like, what is that? What is that? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're not. They're Not now. <laughs> not now. Yeah, they only might be. What is that thing? Yeah, what is that what stick? Looks, uh, is it dead? <laughs> But w- this is what happens uh-huh. when things are being called into fruit That's as well. Right. Everything that flowers, like dogwoods flower, dogwoods. and they get their fruit mm-hmm. at this time, mm-hmm. that you're going to get um, that right. red fruit that mm-hmm. dogwoods get. Yeah, Plants are getting called into mm-hmm. doing a different thing yeah. at this point. I know some viburnums have, have been doing that. Yeah, yeah. got some viburnum. Yeah. My southern magnolia, oh, yeah. which was, was stunning. Really? I It was a... It was this year beautiful. was good. Oh yeah, it was beautiful. Wow. Um, it's it's near our porch, and uh-huh. I got to watch the bees. Oh yeah, in the in that they were, nice. and the honeybees were were in it, and uh-huh. it's it's big. It's thirty big? feet tall. 30 it is foot. it is Woo! it is very big. Wow. And what was happening is all of a sudden I'm seeing this sprinkle uh-huh. from the tree, and I'm like, "What the heck is that?" And uh-huh. you know, I'm actually on Squirrel Patrol, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> thinking that it's a patrol. squirrel up there uh. like, eating a nut or something. But then when I looked, uh-huh. there was a bunch of honeybees that were just wow. pollinating the flowers that uh-huh. were in the tops of the trees, and it was okay. sprinkling down. It was very cool. Yeah, it's nice. it was very cool. Oh wow! And that right now, right. that those, all the work of the bees. Is. Now that fruit, mm. okay, it's been pollinated. Pollinated already. It is now fruiting. Right. right. And that the, the, I hate to use the word cone, but uh-huh. it's a way to describe it. Right. That that fruit, that cone that, that forms right. on the magnolia 
is starting to turn a little blush pink. Ooh, beautiful. Very cool. Yeah, Color, cool. texture, and form, people. There you go. Uh -huh. And that it's going to eventually have a red fruit Radish. inside there. Oh. But uh, right now, it's got that. It's a it's a very yeah. soft, soft and pink. pinky. Oh, yeah. wow. So it's, so they're great. starting to turn, and that's what's happening right yeah. now. Right now, it's a great, it's time. great time. Berries are happening. Right. So a lot of the buried plants are. That's what's mm -hmm. happening there. Plants wow. are not dying. Yeah, if we're they're, enjoying them more. Right, and and sure. you said shed like. Right now, I, just because it's an evergreen, oh, yeah. a needled evergreen, it's going to shed, shed out. Pines bit, yeah. are going to start to shed, shed bit, and yeah. they're preparing for winter. Mm -hmm. They're discarding the growth that is not getting enough sunlight to produce any food, mm -hmm. and the outward branches are hardening off. They're outward right. tips, wow. and so they're shedding out. Sure. Some of those needles or even leaves like in azaleas and things right. like that. And they may look a little sparse. Uh -huh. Thank goodness for, uh, yeah. we've got, we used to sell like right. a lot of Nigra variety right. arborvitae or American arborvitae. Right. And thank goodness for emerald greens emerald because greens, what yeah. happened is mm -hmm. this time of the year, all of those American arborvitaes would shed, shed out, out and they would look like, <laughs> my plant's dying. I want them all replaced right now. Uh -oh. And what would happen? It was just the time of the year. Uh -huh. So, again, your plants will shed out shed a, little a little bit. bit. Don't get mm -hmm. panicked. Don't get this is, there's yeah. a transition period mm -hmm. between now and, and our really hard freeze Freezing. in winter. Yes. Um, and, and that those buds are being set right now for spring and all that right. many Next are year. already set. Mm hmm just relax. relax. Yeah. Don't just panic. relax, everybody. Yep. Don't panic. Don't. That's yeah. right. If you're, you know, if mm -hmm. if that plant was dead two months ago, it's probably dead. dead but if yeah. it's just all of a sudden looking mm -hmm. ratty, ratty, let mm -hmm. it go until yeah, spring. Go. You can decide sometime March, April whether it's, it's either done. pushing new growth or it's mm -hmm. not. Right. There'll be buds on it that will be soft oh. and supple. That that will determine whether it's alive or not. Yeah, you but can see don't that. go crazy trying yeah. to replace your no. plants right now. Yeah, you'll see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's just relax. That's right. Enjoy your garden. Yeah, it's a beautiful right. time. Uh -huh. Keep your shears in your holster. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got a commercial coming up and this is when we've got Carol in our caller. Right, so we'll Carol. be right back right after this. Visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center for the best selection of summer flowering perennials anywhere. Grown flowers in colors as vast as the rainbow. Reblooming daylilies in all the best varieties. Giant hardy hibiscus with flowers that measure 12 inches across. Make sure to visit our water garden department. Fish plants and water treatments that will keep your pond beautiful and crystal clear. Thinking about a new filter, UV, or water feature? Bloomer's has them all in stock. Need to replace that sterilizer bulb? Bloomers carries a wide selection to match your model UV. Fall decorations are starting to roll in. Wind chimes, flags, and more. Bloomers has been selected the best of the best garden center by South Jersey Magazine. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township today. Just 30 minutes from Philadelphia. Find more information at bloomers.com. That's bloomers.com. Tired of pale green, weedy results from four-step lawn programs? That's because they don't do anything for the soil. The New American Lawn 4-Step Program feeds the lawn and the soil. MagiCal Plus, a unique soil food that adjusts soil pH, loosens hard soil, and feeds soil microbes is the key difference. Without the right soil conditions, you'll never enjoy a great lawn. Competitive programs simply don't match up. So feed your lawn and your soil with the new American Lawn 4-Step Program by Jonathan Green. Jonathan Green products can be found at these fine stores. Action Hardware, Wilmington, Delaware. Hokesson Hardware, Hokesson, Delaware. Gaspers Garden Center, Richboro, Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 685 one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. 
call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, Ed, we are back, and we uh, have a caller. Carolyn called and had questions about bringing yeah. her poinsettia indoors. She called the hotline, uh-huh. right, and and that she wasn't sure exactly when right. she should bring it in. Mm. And I admire that, being able to keep a poinsettia all the, all way, the way through. Now. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> all the way up to now. <laughs> you said your mom used to do that. Oh, yeah, she loved it. She yeah. used to keep them over? Keep and, them over, yeah. And they are naturally tropical, mm-hmm. tropical plants, plants in yep. Mexico. So That's right. keeping a poinsettia over summer the summer, summer is it's not great. unheard yeah. of. Oh, they grow beautifully. Yeah, well, you know, let, let's listen to what uh, Carolyn had to say. Mm-hmm. Hi, my name is Carolyn. And I'm calling about a poinsettia that I had uh, saved from over Christmas. It's one of the ones that has the little rose buds, roses on them. And it's I've had it outside, and it's growing so beautifully and full, and I don't know when to bring it back into the house and whether I should repot the soil and all along with it. And I hate, hate to lose it because I'm looking forward to it blooming this Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. That, you know, <sighs> okay. <laughs> now, uh, let's just talk quickly about mm-hmm. uh, bringing plants inside. Sorry. Last week, we talked about bringing your tropicals Tropical in. You plants, need to yep. spray them. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the this poinsettia. Okay. This poinsettia mm-hmm. has been outside. It's been subject to right. all of the insects that are out there. Right. Anything from aphids to white fly to mealybugs to... It. You name it. <laughs> so you need to spray it. Yeah. And Julio, what would you recommend? Spray, well, we have uh, Bonide. They have a um, Captain Jack's would be uh, something. Would be a great on. spray. Yep. And that that's a spray. But if you wanted to just use something that you could sprinkle in the soil. Oh, yes. Bonide has another product. It's called a houseplant insect control. It's a systemic. Perfect. So you can put it on the bottom of the uh, pot. And that I would do both. Wow. I do both. And the reason Double being duty, right? is is you have the longer residual with uh-huh. the systemic. Right. So systemic is going to oh, last yeah. and last and last. Yep. Where Captain Jack's, it does have a decent residual. Mm-hmm. But, again, it, the wow. way that insects work is that they overwhelm you with numbers. Yes. So mm-hmm. they go, you have the adults, and you usually can see them. But then there's mm-hmm. also the immature insect, and there's the uh-huh. eggs. And Catching it totally. Right. And how about all the insects that actually don't do anything until nighttime? So you never see them. You never see those, right? Right. Uh You see the damage. You can't figure out where is this coming from. And it's (laughs) that they're hiding in the soil or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That systemic will take care of them. That's right. Uh, Sometimes better than like the the spray of Captain Jack's. Again, Captain Jack's Mm -hmm. uh, is spinosad, which is organic. Organic. Mm-hmm. This one that lasts for two months, so that's uh, yeah. that's really a uh, great product one, there. One two punch, yeah, one beautiful. Two punch. I like that two punch. <laughs> <laughs> now, getting your poinsettia to bloom. Oh, poinsettias okay. are light sensitive, very light. You need, mm-hmm. <laughs> folks. A poinsettia is should be fifty bucks. That's it. <laughs> the amount of time. Oh effort. my gosh. Uh, poinsettia. To when do they start it, to get <laughs> right. it to bloom? They, oh. they were they were started to be rooted uh-huh. all the way back in June. But wow. we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. We're going to talk about the fact that the lighting uh-huh. on poinsettias to get them to flower at Christmas because they would naturally flower more like Valentine's Day. Day. Oh, okay, so February. Mm-hmm. If Carolyn, if you don't want to do anything, you can bring that poinsettia in, put it in the brightest room you have. And then you're going to lose some leaves, but it won't flower until yeah. after Christmas. After Christmas, wow. 
and you can call it uh, a winter rose because right. that's probably the variety that yeah. you have. It's, that's it's not necessarily yeah. a poinsettia for Christmas. Not it's a winter one. rose. There you go. <laughs> but uh, if you want to get it to bloom mm -hmm. at on time, here's what you need to do. Step by step. Step by step. Uh -huh. First of all, you need to give it six hours of direct light, mm -hmm. but the rest, okay, for about 10 weeks, you have to give it 13, 13 hours, hours of uninterrupted Ooh. darkness. Ooh. And neat growers do this, folks. Right. So you give it the, you give it darkness so that it gets, gosh, it, it, you, it's what we'll call it into bloom. Right. How many times, we talked about it like six or seven times today right. about how sunlight, sunlight calls affecting. plants and even animals to do things. Right. So what you're going to do is you're, you're going to put it into that darkness uh -huh. and then bring it out. Every and day. Now, where would you uh, put that uh, plant? Oh, Some place where you know you're not going to get like a crack of light pe right. peering through so a closet. Clo well, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. closet you don't use. Yep. Something um, like that. Some Base place. Basement, Amy. I'm not going down the basement steps every day for a point sale. But <laughs> Carolyn might. Carolyn might. Yeah, yeah, she loves her. So, but it's got to be in the dark. That's right. It has to be in the dark. It has mm -hmm. to be total darkness. Total darkness, right. Um, get to October. Um, and trying to get for a mid-December date, again, then you go to 15 hours. 15, yeah, you increased it. Uh, mm -hmm. of, wow. of darkness. There you go. It's, um, And again, the temperature has to be right. Yeah, and the temperature has to be right. But it's all about that key Six with the dark, darkness. With, with the early, the early darkness that we're starting right about now. Mm -hmm. Um, it is tricky. It is it is a challenge to do, and it's it's kind of fun because when you do it, it's like look what I did, and uh, it is yeah, impressive. It is. It's very impressive. I'm very. impressed by anybody that can get their point set at a bloom on time. Oh yeah, because it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, Carolyn have to tell us if she, you know when she does this that yeah that it worked. Yeah. Let let us know because yeah. again, it, so 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 let's back up and, and right. we're talking a lot in between. Right. All right. You, you're going to continue to water it. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep it. Uh, you're going to bring it into the house after you sprayed it a few times. And again, the right around the when the fall starts, okay, that's when you do the the for about ten weeks you're gonna be doing this. Thirteen hours of uninterrupted darkness every day. Right. And I mean, some people try to put it under a box, box. or something, that doesn't right. work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You break the plan as yeah. it and then you give it eleven hours. Mm -hmm. So 13 hours of darkness, 11 hours Nine of hours. of bright light. Bright light, yep. Um, temperature ranges, usually inside the house range, you yeah, know, 65, 65 to 72, yeah, something like that. Um, if you can lower the nighttime temperatures, that that would Better. that would help. Mm -hmm. um, not not essential. Mm -hmm. You're going to still feed it. Okay? Water it. Water it, mm -hmm. yep. It's not, you're not putting it into dormancy. Don't, yeah. don't misunderstand. You're, you're getting... You're tricking the plant into thinking that it's February, right? And that's what's going to get it to bloom. Mm -hmm. So, again, it, it's going to be another sequence where uh, you get into October and to like to, uh, to get it to to do its thing. You're going to have mm -hmm. to go to again 15 hours. 15 hours increasing. increasing. So October first, yes. mm -hmm. you know, you're going to do if you do 15 hours a night, right? Then it's going to bloom for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I have a story of where I had a grower and he was been growing poinsettias for years. He puts up a shade cloth and that he's got it growing. And then all of a sudden the streets, uh, the mm -hmm. town put street lights in. Oh boy. Completely threw up his crunk oh, poinsettia crop. That's it. He's done. And he, and he, he missed points. He missed Christmas with his poinsettias. He lost it. Yeah. Wow. Because they had the street lights, and the street lights affected everything. Affected his poinsettia crop. Wow. Oh, see, well. see how sensitive that is. All right. Very sensitive. Hey, I I, I admire Carolyn. Try it. 
Yeah, try it. Try yeah. it. And if you miss it, so what? Who cares? Yeah. But it was some, something that was fun. But naturally, if you didn't do anything, it's going to it's gonna bloom sometime in February. Oh, yes. It Valentine's is. gift. There, there you, you go. go. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> gift. <laughs> it would be a surprise. That's yeah. for sure. Well, I hope she tries it because um, I would like to see what happens. Yeah. And yeah. don't, listen, you're going to lose some leaves when you bring it in. Don't oh, be yeah. afraid of that. Yeah. Just just let natural. it go. It's natural. A, it, yeah. it's, it'll grow. Mm-hmm. It'll, grow. it'll grow. Don't cu- Please don't cut it back anymore. No. It's done. No. Um, and again, don't be afraid to tie it up if it gets a little yeah, thin. A little thin there. Yeah. All right. Got yeah. any other questions? Call the hotline. There you go. All right. We'll be right back after this. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Wow, Julio. <laughs> Again, we've gone long. You talk too much. Oh, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank Brett. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Brett. And that next week, make sure you join us here in the garden. That uh, We'll be talking about fall mums, ornamental peppers, and we'll be talking about vegetables as well. So we'll see you next week here in the garden. See you at Bloomers in the Garden. The first person to survive Alzheimer's disease is out there. They might even be listening to this right now. Maybe they're waiting for the traffic light to change. Maybe they're daydreaming about a trip they've planned with their family. Maybe they're in a toddler seat, strapped in and wondering if they're almost home. That first survivor is out there and they're going to hold on to everything the disease steals away. And the Alzheimer's Association is going to make it happen by funding research, advancing public policy, and spurring scientific breakthroughs, and by providing local support right now to those living with the disease and their caregivers, we're easing the burden for all those facing it until we accomplish our goal. Alzheimer's disease has devastated millions of lives, but that's all going to change when we reach the first survivor. But we won't get there without you. Visit ALZ.org to join the fight.